we will compare two mediums, watercolor and gouache. I will paint the same subject, this pug whose name is Ting. And first I will paint her with Chinese watercolor. I thought that will be appropriate because pugs were first bred in China. They came to Europe from there. And then I will paint a second version. I will paint Ting with Himi gouache. I see a lot of comments on social media and also here on YouTube. Artists are not really familiar with gouache and they don't quite understand what the difference is watercolor. So I thought painting the same subject with these two mediums will be helpful. So you can see how different the results will be at the end, but also how different the process is because the order of painting is a little different with watercolor and gouache. And after you watch this video, please let me know in comments which medium you like better, which result you like better, and who in your heart you think won the battle between watercolor and gouache. Chinese gouache is very similar to other brands of gouache that I use. I use Daniel Smith and Holbein. It might be just very slightly more opaque. The colors are a little different. And also in uh, Chinese watercolor, the white is included in the set. And we will see, I squeezed out a little bit of white, but we will see if I need to use it. So I am getting started and watercolor is always painted from light to dark. So I will start with a light yellow wash to create the illusion of sunlight and also to give the pug that golden glow that her fur has. I have a whole playlist of videos about painting pets here on YouTube. If you would like to check that out, I will leave you a link in the video description. And I also teach a class that's called Painterly Pet Portraits. It's available on Skillshare and Udemy. If you want to go deeper into painting animals with watercolor to learn how to paint fur, how to use the colors, you can find that information in the video description as well. And also on my website, tamirup.com. I start with the yellow wash because that's the lightest color on in my painting and also the warmest color. And then next thing I do, I apply a purple wash and purple mixing with yellow. These are complementary colors. So it gives me a nice kind of grayed out tone. So I am painting the shadows. First wash on the shadows, working pretty lightly. And I'm also going to mix cobalt blue with purple to paint the cushion. I am working wet on dry. I didn't wet my paper, but I do drop in additional colors into the previous wash, into the previous wash that's still wet. And that way you see in the shadows, I get colors to mix and I get a nice variation of color. I try not to control watercolor too much. I think it looks much nicer when you allow it to run and mix on paper. Okay, this, these are my lights and light midtones. Now let's apply dark midtones with a smaller brush. I'm using Chinese brushes, natural hair. I believe they're all goat hair brushes. It's appropriate tool to use for Chinese watercolor, but I also use them for regular watercolor that I have. I'm applying a mixture of cobalt blue with purple and I neutralize those colors with a little bit of yellow ochre. Gives me nice dark gray, very similar to what I see in the reference photo. And I am painting the details, her markings and her face. Using a pretty limited palette for this painting. Always better, always good idea not to use a whole bunch of colors, but stick with maybe five or six. That's what I usually try to do. And I wanted to draw attention also to the fact that I'm leaving quite a bit of white paper. I don't cover every square inch of my page with watercolor. I think that's the essence of watercolor that you can actually see the paper that it's painted on. And that makes a huge difference if you save some paper in some areas. They were not going to be super large, but there will be some. And that brings light into your painting and that also lets your painting breathe. In my opinion, not everybody paints like that, but I think that's one of the big differences between watercolor and gouache, because you will see in the second part of this video, when I start painting the same subject with gouache, that everything will be covered and white will be applied on top. It will be applied last. I squeeze the colors fresh out of the tube. I don't have this prepared on a palette anywhere, so I'm using my ceramic cup. 
so that's why I also have this plastic tray here so that's where I mix my paint with water that's how I control the proportion of water and paint and also some colors I will mix but mostly this is for mixing pigment with water because I don't want to apply too much pigment on paper so I first kind of test it on the palette and then I paint with it okay I have a little orange here I want to warm up the dog's fur I used lemon yellow and yellow ochre so she is very cool all the colors are very cool so I want to add a little warmth to my painting so I will do that using a little bit of orange Also using a little splattering to imitate the design on the cushion. I don't want to paint every single flower. Let's give our cushion a little orange border. Always good to distribute your colors more than in one spot. And also I forgot that the dog has a tail. I just noticed it. So I'm going to add that real quick. Okay, I'll let this layer dry as well. And all I have left to do is paint the darkest darks on the dog. I'm still using a small pointy brush and I do not use black pigment even though it is included in the set of my watercolors but it's very easy to get nice black color by mixing complementaries so I mixed blue with orange and I added a little bit of purple into it and I got this nice purplish black so let's add details to the dog's face Here she is. The total time I actually spend on this painting, not counting the drying time, is about 30 minutes. All right, and let's now work on our second version. Pug named Ting painted with Himi gouache. Here is my set. And the main difference working with gouache versus watercolor is that you don't have to paint from light to dark like we do in watercolor. Gouache is an opaque medium, so the order of painting is not quite so critical. Some artists start with the focal point and then paint outwards from it, kind of like a mosaic, putting every piece together. Some people paint from dark to light, so they apply lighter colors and highlights last. The way I'll do it in this painting, it will be kind of a combination of things. I will paint large shapes first. You see I'm painting the dog and her cushion and I apply a little bit of pigment on the floor. Mostly I do this to kill the white of the paper. I am going to cover the whole sheet. All the whites will be applied, restored later with white paint. And now I'm going to work on the focal point on the dog's face on her markings and I will also kind of start working on shadows. You will see how I will treat the shadows a little later.
And the big advantage of having this set and having 24 colors available is that I don't have to mix that much. I still mix quite a few colors, but now that my dog is more or less finished, I see that she's very beige and black. Not much color there, very neutral. So what I can do, just pick up a few colors. I think I will use the same blue I'm planning on using for the cushion and just apply it in a few places on the dog like she has some colorful reflections on her and I also see some pink kind of shade in her fur it's probably a reflection from something as well but I love that colorful effect so I am going to add a little bit of pink to make the dog just visually more interesting and more colorful but I'm sure you understand by now that the approach to painting is quite different from watercolor and the order of painting is very different and I very often use watercolor and gouache together because they have the same binder. So if you're interested in some examples, I left you some links and I will also place a card in the upper right corner. I mostly use this technique for painting flowers or used so far. So if you want to check out those videos, it might give you some interesting creative ideas for your paintings. Okay, let's finish working on the cushion. Give it a little shadow and a little light, a little variation of tone. some design I'm not going to paint the same design that's on the original but I will kind of hint that this is fabric that has some design on it and I also started painting the shadows they're obviously too gray and and too dark but now that I'm finishing the background I can kind of glaze over them with yellow and make them softer so even though gouache is opaque, it still has some transparency if you apply it thinly. So I can glaze over the shadows and adjust their tone, their value to where I need it to be. Okay, and a few details on the floor to show that it's tile. the tape that's my favorite part I usually tape the edges on my gouache paintings because you have to cover the whole sheet and I like a neat crisp edge now my painting looks a lot tidier I remove all those messy edges and here she is Ting painted with gouache and here are the two paintings together you saw the process and now you can compare the result I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you so much for watching it and I'll see you in the next one here on Tamirap Studios channel.